Welcome to the NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. From Easton Stadium in Los Angeles, game one of three today from the LA Regional. It's the champions of the Pac-12, UCLA, taking on the champs of the Mountain West Conference, Fresno State, in this winner's bracket game from Los Angeles. One of the greats in the game, Rachel Garcia, will be pitching for UCLA today. She's won her last 23 decisions. It's been a while since she's lost. She had to go back to May of 2019 when she was beaten by Arizona. Take a look at what happened yesterday. UCLA behind Megan Faramo shut out Long Beach State in Haley Dulcini and Fresno State, a two-hit shutout of Minnesota. Terrific to have you with us on this Saturday. Working remotely along with two-time All-American pitcher Kenzie Fowler. I'm Mark Neely. Kenzie, day one yesterday from L.A. No big surprises. We saw some really good pitching. Yeah, I mean, we knew we were going to have good pitching going into this regional that lived up to the hype. We had that pitcher's duel yesterday with Minnesota and Fresno State. And then Megan Framo, one of the aces for UCLA, comes out and is dominant in the nightcap. And I don't know how many regionals can say they had two shutouts on day one. Well, a closer breakdown of day one highlights the great pitching performances, including Dolcini's 13 strikeouts, two-hit shutout of Minnesota, and Foremo was outstanding. The run rolling five innings as they blank Long Beach State 8-0. In that win for the Bruins, they hit four home runs, and two of those came from Delaney Wiz. Yeah, we saw Bree Perez go yard, Rachel Garcia go yard, but it was Delaney Wiz who really stole the show with two bombs. This offense, to me, gets so overlooked because of their stars in the circle. And Farima, one of those stars for UCLA, a huge first game for the sophomore. I love that she got the ball in game one. She's showing that emotion and showing why she is one of the best in the country. And Fresno State and the Mountain West Conference Pitcher of the Year, Haley Dulcini, was outstanding yesterday. We're going to get to see her again today. She shined. She was ready from the first pitch. And every time Minnesota would get a runner on, she would shut the door with a strikeout. Could we see another pitcher's duel? It's very possible. This is ace versus ace. This is what you want to watch. And that ace on the other side is three-time Pac-12 Player of the Year, Rachel Garcia. UCLA, Fred, is straight ahead. After a great performance yesterday, what makes her so good, Kinsey? Her rise ball was dominant yesterday. She sets it up really well with her screwball, and we saw her work her curve away. But that rise ball, I mean, Minnesota just could not catch up to it. Haley Dolcini makes the start for the second straight game. UCLA is the visiting team today on their home field. That's the way it works in the NCAA Regionals. They were the home team yesterday. Visiting team today, so that means the Bruins lead off the top of the first. Aaliyah Jordan, who is the DP today in the box. First pitch from Dolcini is a strike, and off we go from L.A. Kick back, grab a seat. It's 12.35 Pacific time. We'll probably still be calling softball 12 hours from now. Three games. <laughs> awesome Saturday. The NCAA Regionals take a peek at the Bruins lineup brought to you by Capital One. Delaney Wiz going to play first base today, staying in that normal cleanup spot for the Bruins. Fourteen shutouts for Dolcini. That would be a tall order to add to that. It's. The UCLA Bruins she is facing today, but what a season for Haley Dolcini, 22 wins. And she gets strike three on the outside corner, getting Jordan looking, and that's quite a nice start for Dolcini. Aaliyah Jordan rarely strikes out, and rarely strikes out looking. This is Dolcini going right at the outside corner with that screwball. It's got a little bit of up movement to it. Really nice start for the senior. Steps Brianna Perez, looks to bunt, lays down a great one, but there's the third baseman, it's close. Broussard's throw just a hair late, and Brianna Perez beats out the bunt for the first hit of the game. This is why she leads 
towards UCLA in batting average. She has so many tools that she can utilize, showing her short game. Swing away, we saw her power with that home run yesterday, just a dy dynamite player offensively for UCLA. A three-run home run yesterday for Perez. She starts today with a bunt base hit to bring up Garcia. Take a look at those numbers for Perez, Garcia, and Wiz against Long Beach State. Five for nine, four homers. Three came in a row. Back-to-back, -back, Perez, Garcia, and Wiz. To Garcia from Palmdale, a town north of Los Angeles. There's a strike, let it go, throw to second. She is going to be safe at second base. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have obstruction called. You can see shortstop Alicia Denby coming over. It's a very tough play because the shortstop is always moving into the base, moving into the runner. Of course, Brie Perez going in head first. It's Vince Price, the second base umpire, right on that call. I mean, the rule is you cannot be in the base path without the ball. It's a shame for Fresno State. I think Brie Perez could have been out there. Yeah, that's the other part of the equation I was wondering about. Had the obstruction call not been made, what the call would have been out or safe, but a moot point. I think from a fan's perspective, just watching it, as you look at the, the rule, yeah, perhaps Dinby's right foot was in the base path, but you saw Perez slide in and caught the back part of the bag unobstructed, but the obstruction call had already been made. That's a walk here to Garcia. Take another look. She definitely went towards the outside part of the base. What do you think, Kenzie? Is this yeah, a legitimate obstruction? It's all about where you are before yeah. she has the ball. I think that's a good call. You could see her left knee was in front before she had the ball. I mean, bang, bang play, but I think that's the right call. Yeah, great look from our crew. That angle from the outfield looking back in definitely looked to be obstruction. From that angle, you for sure see Denby well into the base path. Here's Delaney Wiz, first baseman for this game, for a two homer game yesterday. Home <laughs> runs for Wiz, her 13th and 14th of the year last night. Well, she leads the team in homers and RBIs. Got to see her catch last night since she's really become connected to Megan Faramo when she pitches. Liz behind the plate. Two on, one out, just underway, top of the first. Check swing, hit to the right side, off Hernandez, and everybody's safe. And first baseman Vanessa Hernandez able to get a glove on it but couldn't feel it cleanly. And everybody's safe, bases are loaded. I mean, I'm not really sure what happens here with Hernandez. It looks like just the spin and she doesn't set her feet. That's something you've got to have defensively when you're facing UCLA, especially in the first inning, trying to help out your pitcher. It should be an easy out. Error charge to Fresno State. Just their 34th of the season playing in their 48th game. Well, they have played well defensively, but commit their first error of the regional, and it loads them up for Maya Brady. Maya finally able to play her first NCAA tournament game last night. And 0 for 2 with a walk. change up there from Dulcini. He didn't see her use it a ton last night. She didn't really need it. She was that dominant against Minnesota. It's a good look at her off speed. Yeah! 
just missing near the outside corner. Very close to Brady. Bases loaded. Perez at third. Garcia at second. Wiz is at first. A wave and a miss. Brady chased one upstairs and strikes out. Second K of the inning for Dolcini. This is that rise ball we were talking about going up in the zone. It has a ton of late movement. And that's a huge strikeout for Dolcini. Maya Brady, one of the best hitters for UCLA down in that five hole. Race is loaded for Alyssa Garcia and Dolcini paints the outside corner with strike one. San Diego area native from Chula Vista, Garcia. Same spot, same call, 0-2. She's going to get that call. You want to live right there. That's a great pitcher's pitch. That low screwball. UCLA has almost seven left-handed hitters in their lineup, sometimes eight. That's seven in there in the lineup today. The top two in the order. Then you got right-handed bats, Garcia and Wiz, and then Five from nine are all lefties today. Kelly in the way for us. And how about that? Dolcini comes back. She strikes out the side, works around the walk, bump base hit, and error. Dolcini, she had 13 yesterday, three so far in this first game. This senior, she's here for the moment. Brella fixed up. <laughs> UCLA left the bases loaded without scoring in the top of the first. So we go to the bottom half. Fresno State coming up and facing in the circle for the Bruins, Rachel Garcia. Yeah, you know her, you've seen her. Rachel Garcia, one of the best pitchers, if not the best pitcher in the nation. Throws 67, 70 miles an hour. And it's that rise curve combo that has made her so good in her career. She's one of those pitchers where you know what she's throwing and you still can't hit it. But it's her location is what separates her. She can really pinpoint her pitches. Let's take a look at the Fresno State starting lineup brought to you by Capital One. Skyler Broussard batting in the seven hole. It's a lineup that features in the three spot. Deahi Matson, who is the Mountain West Conference Player of the Year as a freshman. There's their interim head coach, Jody Cox, who has been arguably the most happy coach that we have. And they're all happy to be in the postseason. Yeah. Jody Cox really seems to be thrilled and happy, obviously, with their win over Minnesota yesterday to get into this winner's bracket game against the host UCLA. Kayla Jennings, center fielder, leads off for the Bulldogs. We see Rachel Garcia right there with the first pitch, trying to test that outside corner that I think she saw Dolcini get a number of times with a screw ball in the top of the first. Yeah, both Dolcini and Garcia really like to throw to that arm side, that inside to righties, outside the lefties. For Dolcini, it's that screw ball that we saw her using for Rachel Garcia. It's her backdoor curve. Kaylin Jennings, a couple of hits in yesterday's win over Minnesota. Leads the team and runs, hits, stolen bases. And very efficient at the top of the order. A sixth year senior, Caitlin Jennings from Rancho Cucamonga, Southern California. So you're going to see that last pitch getting up to 68 miles per hour. You can see her getting north of that at times for sure as well. Yeah, we saw Megan Framo touch 70 a couple of times last night. Yeah. 
check swing foul. Watching some of the earlier games today in Alabama. Alabama won again. They haven't lost a regional game basically in forever. And they had Montana Fouts going today. And I saw her hit 73 a couple of times. Yeah, I, th I think she's the hardest thrower in terms of miles per hour in, in the country. She brings some serious heat. And that hit her. Jennings gets hit with the 2-2 pitch. She's on to begin the first. See Garcia is like my dad. That's working the outside part of the plate against Jennings, so trying to bust her up inside and get her jammed, but it just gets away from her. It's a curveball. It's going to run into the lefty. Saw that happen yesterday as well. Aliyah Jordan got hit inside curveball. And a roll at her first pitch hacking. Second baseman for the Bulldogs. Kansas native from Wichita, Goddard High School. She had a couple of hits in last night's win over Minnesota. Went two for four with a double. Fresno State didn't have any problem in the base hit department yesterday. They had 11. They just had issues until later in the game to get that hit with runners in scoring position. They finally able to get that late in the game from Skyler Broussard. It's a strike. Runner goes. Throw to second. Kicks off. Backing up though Perez. And that's a steal for Jennings. Her team leading 35th of the year. Yeah, I was wondering if we'd see her run this early in the game, but this is what Fresno State does. They are very aggressive on the base paths. And Caitlin Jennings, she's the top of the lineup for a reason. Her speed, and talking to Coach Cox, she calls her our wild woman. <laughs> and she'll just get after it on the base paths. Yeah, look at that. 35 stolen bases on the year. She was called out for leaving early last night which doesn't go down technically as a caught stealing, but it took her off the bases. It was a key spot at that time when it was a scoreless game. That stroke into left field for a base hit. Quickly up with it is Kelly Goodnew. Fires home. It's high off Garcia. It carries off the backstop. Jennings unable to score, but Roller takes advantage of the overthrow and advances to second. Roller just really sitting on this outside backdoor curve. Look at that piece of hitting, really nice. And lucky break for UCLA. Jennings was held up at third. If she goes, she's easily safe with this overthrow. You could see third base coach, Coach Lewis, was kind of slapping his hands. Disappointed that it didn't work out. I mean, nine times out of ten, Kelly Gooden has a great throw at home plate, and Jennings would be out by a mile, but throw gets away, and Jennings stays at third. I got no problem holding her at third, because like you say, nine times out of ten, Gooden's going to make a yeah. good throw, and she would have been dead to rights. It kind of makes you slump your shoulders if you're a Fresno State fan. Like, ah, but there's still nobody out in the inning, and here's... Impressive freshman, I he Matson. He was very aggressive swinging early in the count yesterday. Takes a strike on the outside corner, first pitch here. Matson, the Mount West Conference Player of the Year and Co-Freshman of the Year, first team All Mountain West. Coach's two fre uh, true freshman falls behind in the count 0-2. That's 70-mile-per-hour pitch up in her eyes. I mean, this is the hitter that Fresno State wants up in this moment. Even though just a freshman, she's their best hitter. And two hits, a double and an RBI last night against Minnesota. This time she lays off at 69-mile-per-hour rise.
one. Nobody out for Fresno State in the first. And strike three call on the outside corner as Rachel Garcia paints that edge. A strikeout for the first down. Garcia just going to her go-to pitch. It's that backdoor curve. You can see Garcia, Alyssa Garcia, that is behind the plate, just really working that corner. It's a nice pitch. One out for first baseman Vanessa Hernandez. Blank on the inner half. UCLA and Fresno State. Had a lot of meetings through the years, including this season back on February 12th, early in the year for Ramos through well. Garcia had some key hits, including a two-run home run. But a lot more on the line today. Yeah, and for that meeting, Fresno State did not see Rachel Garcia in the circle. They saw Megan Framo. Rachel Garcia has quickly gotten ahead. And gets a quick three-pitch strikeout of Hernandez. Back-to-back -back K's and now two down. And Rachel Garcia just buckling down there. I mean, a little bit of trouble. You saw assistant coach Lisa Fernandez go out to talk to the senior, make some adjustments in what they were seeing, and then quickly back-to-back -back strikeouts. Fresno State had runners at second and third, nobody out. And second and third, two outs. And Rachel Garcia pours in strike one to Adriana Noriega. Garcia seems like she's possessed and determined to get out of this jam after there were runners at second and third. Nobody out. She is attacking. Just turned on a gear. Okay, I see your base hit. Let me level up here. They asked for an appeal. No swing, according to first base umpire Scott Tomlinson. And Garcia ends the threat, striking out the last three hitters. Well, UCLA had the bases loaded, one out, didn't score. And now Fresno State strands two in scoring position. The NCAA Softball Regionals are presented by Capital One, what's in your wallet? I'll tell you what's in the trophy room at UCLA, 119 national championship trophies. 12 of those for softball, really 13, because they count a 13th national title that they won in the AIAW days back in 1982 before the NCAA took over and made it the Women's College World Series. And they're the defending champs right now, 2019. Well, each team had a chance to score in the first and did not. Top of the second, UCLA, the visiting team here today, and the winner's bracket on their home field. And an aggressive swing and a miss by Tessa Malaulu. See, and he saw UCLA have bases loaded, one out to begin the game. But when she struck out Brady Swingy and Garcia, Alyssa Garcia, to end that threat. Yeah, that bases loaded situation really it was just one 
bunt single from Bree Perez, and then there was the walk to Garcia and a, an error. Delaney Wiz was able to get on base at first base. That jab, Alaulu finds a green grass in right center field. Has a leadoff base hit. Well, the Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City. The action begins Thursday, June 3rd at noon Eastern, live on ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Winner of this game, sitting in the driver's seat. They go to the regional final tomorrow, needing just one more win to advance to the Super. The loser of this game, let's just say, Kinsey, they will have a lot longer day today than the winner. I think this game is the most important and the hardest to win. Obviously, winner's bracket, so you're going to have that tough opponent who got through their first game. But if you lose this game, it's really hard to get your momentum back in that second game. you got to come back in the late night and, and fight for your life. Winner go home at that point. But this is the momentum game in the regionals. Kinsey Washington sports a foul. Washington starting today at second base. Getting the call at first last night. Slap foul. Kinsley finished the regular season strong. Last game of the regular season, May 15th at Arizona. She had a three-run home run. Yeah, Kinsley Washington has so many tools. Has some power like you're touching on, but right now we're seeing her go to her short game and with her slap. No outs, a runner at first base. She has one job, and that's to move Mala Uli over to second, who has a ton of speed as well. Just foul down the third base side. Lindsay, whose dad, James Washington, was a safety for the UCLA football team and went to the NFL. Won a couple of Super Bowls with the Cowboys. Trying to make some contact, but missed it and strikes out. And Rossini with the first out of the inning, but her fourth strikeout already today. So all the outs have come via the strikeout. In this rise ball, it's so tough. I haven't seen a hitter this weekend be able to touch it up and square it up or lay off of it. It's just so good, her late movement. She kind of throws it around the middle of the plate, so it looks enticing to hitters, but they just can't catch up to it. Kelly Gooden, the left fielder. He's batting in the ninth spot, but really is just another leadoff for her, especially when you look at her numbers. She's hitting 354. Has a team high 15 stolen bases. Yeah, I always look at her average every single year, and it's always one of the, the best for the team. And a COVID sophomore, if you will, but I'm always thinking one day I'll see her in that leadoff spot, but Coach Inouye Perez loves her turning the lineup over in that nine hole. Drops down a bunt. It's a beauty. No chance to get her. Bunt base hit for good, and that's the third hit of the game for UCLA, but two of the three have been bunt hits. The other coming from Brianna Perez. Yeah, Broussard at third, playing a little bit too far back for my liking, knowing that you have speed at first, you have speed at the plate. And Kelly Gooden, she's going for that bunt to move her teammate, but to also get herself on, that's a huge part of her game. Maria Jordan, a rare strikeout for her, caught looking in the first. So she's 0 for 1, and she was up there ready to jump on the first pitch this time. And 
UCLA regular season outstanding with runners in scoring position. Granted, the sample size is much smaller, but still last night, just one for nine against the beach. Go for three today so far. Yeah, that, that one, of course, was the big home run from Bree Perez, that three-run shot. Delcini got a strikeout of Jordan in the first inning. A similar pitch, but a little that time a little further off the plate, not in the zone. And Perez waiting on deck. Another foul. Well, now second time through the lineup for UCLA. And we talked about how they have seven left-handed hitters and Haley Dulcini has really been working that outside part of the plate to those lefties with her, her screw ball and her rise ball. So I'm really interested to see how those lefties will game plan seeing Dulcini through the second time in the lineup. So if you're Dulcini, do you want to show a curve, trying to throw them off a little bit, jam them up, let your rise ball run, or do you just kind of stick with the game plan stick with what's working, what's your go-to pitch, and just keep sticking that outside corner really until you see a hitter square you up. UCLA has not been able to do that yet. Jordan sends it to left near the line and a running catch made by Ahi Matson. That's gonna bring up Brianna Perez. That hit with a runner in scoring position was a loud one, this three-run home run. Yeah, this is what started that back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home run inning for UCLA. It all happened with no outs in the second inning. So similar situation, two outs on the board, but second inning and a couple runners on. And a bonnet her way on in the first. She's now three for four in the regional. Two on, two outs. No score, top of the second in this winner's bracket game from L.A. And Rossini quickly ahead of Perez, nothing in two. Yeah, that's her pitch right there to those left-handed hitters to set up. It's got a little bit of upspin, tailing away, tailing up. That's been close to a strike today. That one apparently just a hair off. She goes back to it. I love it. I mean, that's close. I think that's the right call. Could be called a strike, but there it is. And there's a strikeout for Dolcini, her fifth. UCLA strand two more. Bruins have left five through the first couple of innings. And you see this game, UCLA Fresno State, the driver's seat game. This is a winner's bracket. Whoever wins it. Bump you to the right to the regional final tomorrow. We got two more games here today. An elimination game between the beach and Minnesota. And then the outcomes of these two games will determine who we see in the final elimination game later tonight. This is what happened yesterday. Fresno State and Dulcini shut out Minnesota on two hits as Haley struck out 13. And Megan Ferrema was outstanding in the five inning run rule win for the Bruins over Long Beach State 8 0. Yeah, that Minnesota Long Beach State matchup that we'll see next. We'll have two seniors most likely in the circle, kind of fighting for their careers, wanting to extend their team's life. One more game, but yeah, the pitching that we've seen in this Los Angeles regional have, has lived up to the billing. Long Beach State waiting to play Minnesota in our upcoming game. The first elimination game of the day from Los Angeles. See ya. First pitch off speed, swing and a miss. Haley Galvin. I love that for Garcia. I was wondering if I would see her use that off speed when she got into a little bit of trouble in that last inning, but didn't see it. She was really working that backdoor curve hard, that rise ball hard. Galvin, senior from Fort Gibson, Oklahoma, and began her career playing her true freshman season in 2017 at Oklahoma State. Transferred 
Fresno State 2018 was All Mountain West first team her first year. Yeah, very rarely do you see on the roster for the majority of the teams in our regional. We have Long Beach State, Fresno State, and UCLA, all California teams. But rarely do you see recruits come over from the Midwest part of the country. Typically, you'll look at the rosters and 19 out of 20, 20 out of 20 will be from the state of California. A hot bed of talent on the West Coast, no doubt. Check swing, and she says that hit her and plate umpire Katrina Kershaw agrees and as she shakes her right hand, Galvin takes her base. Second batter hit today by Garcia. Yeah, it looks like it gets right on the arm, on her left, her right arm. Yeah, shaking her right hand a little bit. I don't want to take a ball off the hand from Rachel Garcia. No thanks. <laughs> no, that sounds very painful. Yes. So a Broussard coming up. Lineup cards come out. And then I have a pinch runner for Galvin. Aliyah Cuevas. Cuevas is going to come in and run for Fresno State. Leadoff batter is on for the second straight inning to start today for Fresno State. Skyler Broussard had a big hit yesterday for knocking a couple to snap the scoreless tie against Minnesota. That was two for three on the day. Hanging out in that seven hole again today, but might have had the best performance offensively for Fresno State. Hit back up the middle, step on for one to first, safe, it's off the glove of Wiz. And Broussard will advance to second, and she's out there. They do get two. Not exactly the way you draw up a double play, but they get two outs on the play <laughs> through the Bruins. Broussard hits this pretty sharply up the middle, but you can see with the positioning of Kinsley Washington, she was ready for it, takes it herself, Throw gets away from Delaney Wiz. And you can see Broussard takes off, but how about the presence of mind to make this play? It's a big time unconventional double play for the Bruins. Well, we welcome those of you that have been watching the exciting men's lacrosse quarterfinal finish. Number one, North Carolina beating Rutgers. We welcome you to the Los Angeles softball regional between UCLA and Fresno State. We're scoreless. We have just finished two. We'll be back with more after this. Welcome back to the NCAA softball regionals presented by Capital One. Back in Los Angeles. This is a winner's bracket matchup between UCLA and Fresno State. Starting pitching matchup outstanding, including three-time Pac-12 Player of the Year, Rachel Garcia, in the circle right now for UCLA and a couple of scoreless innings for each pitcher so far. Yeah, and Haley Dulcini in the first inning got out of that bases loaded jam. UCLA in the second also had two runners on. Five strikeouts. She's been clutch so far for Fresno State. Rachel Garcia, a two-way two player, pitcher and hitter, so she leads off here. The three, four, and by, five batters for UCLA. The Bruins are the visiting team today on their home field. Both these teams won yesterday. UCLA won with Long Beach State, eight nothing in five innings. Fresno State outlasted Minnesota, beating the Big Ten team by a score of two zip. And, this is the winner's bracket game. Winner of this game in the driver's seat. We'll move right to the regional final tomorrow. The loser has a much tougher road and will play later today in an elimination game. 
Now, I know it's early, but you can feel the pressure already in this game on both sides. No doubt. Do you sense it a little more from the UCLA side than the Fresno State side, or vice versa? Yes, yes, and you can see that with Dulcini. She kind of had a no-fear mentality when the bases were loaded in that first. I mean, absolutely the underdog. Yeah! I feel like she's someone that loves that, that underdog mentality. Like, give me this opportunity. Give me this moment. That stays three and two on Garcia, who as you, you see walked her first plate appearance. She is one of three finalists of the USA Softball National Player of the Year, along with Jocelyn Allo of Oklahoma and Gabby Plain of Washington. She walks for a second time. A lead off walk to begin the third. It sends up Delaney Wiz. Four homers yesterday in the win for UCLA, and two of them came from Delaney Wiz. Yeah, this first one that she hit, just probably the furthest home run out of those four home runs. But how about another one in the fourth inning? Both solo home runs. But I touched on this yesterday. I think Delaney Wiz is the biggest surprise in her performance for UCLA this season. She was new to the team in 2020, a transfer from LMU, and she's been asked to do a lot defensively, but also offensively. You're asked to hit behind Rachel Garcia in that four hole all season long. You're gonna get pitches. You see early in this game, Haley Dulcini and Fresno State being very careful pitching to Rachel Garcia. So you're Delaney Wiz sitting behind her. You better be ready to swing. As you saw, it was Wiz's seventh career multi-homer game. Her second of this year, she had a two-homer game back on February 24th against San Diego State. She comes to terms with that first pitch called a strike, steps back in the batter's box. Only two. Pinch runner for UCLA, Grace Guzman, running for Rachel Garcia. Trying to go right back in there and fouled off. It seems obvious the first three pitches here, Ken Z. Dulcini does not want uh, Delaney Wiz to get those arms extended. Yeah, throw in really tight on the inside part of the plate. Showed her an off speed in that first pitch. So it speeds up her faster pitches that much more. She's got some options here, 0 2. Going back in, a little flare is going to wind up in the screen. That's off the screen, foul ball. Well, our stack sports lineup continuing tonight and tomorrow. NBA playoffs on this afternoon. Celtics Nets. In the junior welterweight unification bout, Jose Ramirez and Josh Taylor tomorrow morning forming the one for Monaco and PGA Championship final round as well. Quite a weekend. And oh, yeah, by the way, loads of great stuff. Little May Madness already, or Mayhem. There's been some upsets yesterday and, and today early. This is the fun day where you start to see more of those. That's up foul back out of play. Uh, of course, double elimination. So some of those ranked teams that were upset will have to fight their way back and you know prove to themselves and prove their ranking. Try and get back to that regional championship. But yeah, this this first game today is so important. Went away that time, it takes it just off the edge. You can watch the bug at the right-hand corner to check out some of those scores we're talking about, which included James Madison beating Tennessee today, Notre Dame run rule Kentucky. 
Missouri was, what, an out away from the no-hitter, but beat Northern Iowa. That's a high fly to left field. Ahi Matson trots to her left to make the catch. One out. It's a great at-bat from Dulcini. I mean, I know it was a long at-bat in credit Delaney Wiz. She's a tough out. But you walk Rachel Garcia, so you know you have to attack the next hitter. You're not going to put her on, and it's a pretty easy pop-up. Maya Brady takes a strike. Maya, a 342 impressive average, redshirt freshman, a true freshman year last year in the 26 games before COVID. Led the team with seven homers, 28 RBIs, hit 356. Having a great campaign as well. Of course, Maya Brady, the niece of seven times Super Bowl winning quarterback. Tom Brady, but Maya's mother, Maureen, pitched at Fresno State, and not only pitched, but was an All-American pitcher. Led the nation with 26 wins her junior year. You have Kevin Euclid, who's also an uncle of hers by marriage. Kevin Euclid married to Maya's Aunt Julie. And we asked her about, uh, actually, I'll give Kenzie credit. You asked Maya about that tweet that Tom Brady had sent out early in March saying <laughs> that Maya is the best athlete in the family, hands down. It's a bouncing ball towards short. They get the out at second base, but Brady will now run at first. You asked her, what did you think when you saw that tweet? And she said, well, I was nervous what other people might think. And I was worried that the next game that I played, that whoever was pitching against me, the first pitch would be in my ribs. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> She Which is just so kind of shows you her attitude. It was so fun to talk to her. Melissa <laughs> Garcia follows her. Yeah, just who she has in her family. Of course, her mom was an All-American at Fresno State, but yeah, incredibly humble. She told us all about her, her youth, how she played soccer, track, golf, volleyball, flag football. Said she really enjoyed soccer. That was probably her next favorite sport to softball, was soccer. I is at first with two outs. It's a scoreless game in the third. Another foul ball. Well, UCLA is the number two overall seed. The number one overall seed is Oklahoma, and right now they're in a winner's bracket game with the champion of the American Conference, Wichita State, and Wichita State's actually leading OU right now, 2-1 in the fifth inning. It's going to put in play towards left and into foul ground. Madsen got a great jump and crosses the line to make the catch. Mulsini works around that leadoff walk. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Scoreless in L.A. This is the party that every player wants to be at. It's going to be passionate softball for sure. Back to crown a national champion for the first time since 2019. They get to chase history here. Yeah, it's going to be even sweeter since we didn't have one last year. UCLA, the defending national champion, defeating Oklahoma in the championship final. We are scoreless. Into the bottom of the third, here comes Fresno State. Rachel Garcia had a little bit of a scare in the first when Fresno State put runners at second and third with nobody out, and she then went right through Madsen, Hernandez, and Noriega, striking out the three of them on just 11 pitches to end that threat in the first inning. Nine, one, and two part of the order for the Bulldogs. They are the home team in this game on UCLA's home field today. So Lucia Denby, the shortstop, leading off. Oh, 
When you get opportunities to score against Rachel Garcia, and there aren't many, you have to take advantage because she just doesn't give up many runs. In fact, the most runs she's allowed in an outing is two, and those were both unearned runs last weekend at Arizona. That's played off the short hop, but the throw by Mala Ulu is the first out. Winner of this game plays in the regional final tomorrow. The loser will play the elimination game, our third game of the day. Next up after this one, we have the elimination game between Long Beach State and Minnesota. Streaming live on the ESPN app for that game. Fans have made the trip from the Twin Cities to support the Golden Gophers. Finished second in the Big action. Ten this year. <laughs> hey. One thing about this regional, it, we're going to have some of the best weather in Los Angeles. That is true. I know a lot of other parts of the country, especially in the south and Midwest, dealing with a lot of rain and thunderstorms. The forecast was great yesterday. It's great today and tomorrow in Southern California. So we shouldn't have any weather delays at the L.A. region. Yeah, we've got to flex a little bit west coast, get that good weather. Just a gorgeous Saturday afternoon in Southern California. Let me go, <laughs> Bottom of the zone strike at 69. Mm. Hey, you were talking about you don't get many chances to score against Rachel Garcia. And you just go back to that first inning where UCLA, they had an overthrow at home. Caitlin Jennings was held up at third. She kind of stumbled around. Wasn't able to stay on her feet. And I think that was the key. If if Jennings just rounded it normally, didn't dive back or didn't have that little stumble, just stays on her feet, stays agile, she sees that overthrow. And with her speed, she's able to score easily. It's a 1-0 game. But the Bulldogs came up empty in that first inning. Rachel Garcia has not allowed more than one earned run in any outing this season. So if you just use that as a barometer, that means if you're an opponent, unless UCLA gives you some free runs, you're going to have to shut out the Bruins to beat them when she's in the circle. And that's a fly ball to left. That is caught by Gooden. So the career accolades which he is still adding to, not only winning, being a part of the national championship team in 2019, but she's trying to become a three-time winner of the USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year Award. She's won the last two, she's a finalist this year, and she won the Pac-12 Player of the Year Award again this year for the third time. And of course, we'll be competing this summer on Team USA in the Tokyo 2021 Olympics. And kind of interesting, she's looking to be the, the, the first in a while to be named USA Softball Player of the Year for three times, the other being her teammate on Team USA in Kat Osterman. So you'll have, whether she wins it or not, you'll have two of the best pitchers that have won that award on Team USA this summer. Kat didn't win it three years in a row. She won it in 0-2 with Texas, then went and pitched in the Olympics in 04, came back and won it with the Longhorns in 05 and 06. Now you could argue Rachel Garcia it wouldn't be three consecutive years since there was no conclusion last year in awards, but it would be the third straight award handed out. That kind of piece of Laney Wiz was in her first year catching. I should say Garcia. Yeah, Garcia's catching today. Pardon me. I didn't know if this hit. Oh, it gets her right in the rib. Mm. You can see right on her, her left side. Yeah, you can see her kind of hugging that. I always not laugh or chuckle, but when catchers get hit and it's not on the equipment, that's just got to be frustrating. You have all that gear, and it still finds a way to make it sting a little bit. Yeah, that seemed to get her. to the catchers. Yeah, right around that, that mm. on that left side, just above the padding. 
So Alyssa Garcia ready to go again. Says, bring it here, Rachel. Base is empty. Miranda Rolliter, who singled her first time up. Strikes out there to end the inning. Fourth strikeout for Rachel Garcia. When we come back to L.A., a chance to visit the head coach of the Bulldogs, Jody Cox. Winner's bracket game from Los Angeles, UCLA and Fresno State scoreless to the top of the fourth. Let's chat with the Bulldogs head coach, Jody Cox. Your team had an opportunity in the first on Garcia, didn't get it done in that inning, but what came, what, what, what are you seeing from Rachel Garcia and how do you have some, some kind of effectiveness against one of the best pitchers in the game? Yeah, you know, I, I actually liked our first inning. Um, you know, we talked about it yesterday and our, our goal and kind of what we want to do is, is when we see that good pitch, when we see a pitch we like, attack it. Um, and I think we did a good job. Our first couple of hitters, the next couple, not so much. But with again, with this pitcher of this caliber, we've got to attack pitches, pitches in our zone. And, and coach, your ace in the circle, really dominant performance yesterday. She looks good so far. What is it about her mentality or her personality that's kind of showing that she's ready for this moment? She likes the big games, you know, and, and as a team, she's got a, you know, a team full of full of girls behind her um, and she just likes these big moments, you know, um, she wants to compete with the best. I believe she can compete with the best and she's showing it right now. So I love I love what I see out of her. We're happy to be a part of this big game with you. Thanks for the time, coach. Thank you, guys. Go Docs. Thank you, Jody Cox. If, if you had said to Jody Cox yesterday before the games begin that you're going to win your first game against Minnesota, and you're going to be scoreless with UCLA in the middle innings tomorrow in the winner's bracket. Would you take that? I'm sure she would have jumped up and down and said, yes, give me that scenario. Bunt laid down. This time, the third baseman was in tighter, Broussard, and she throws out Mala Ulu. One pitch, one out. Yeah, the bottom of the lineup for UCLA has been really pushing that short game. Good adjustment there from Broussard at third. And this bunt was just a little bit too hard, I think. Mala Ulu trying to put a little bit more touch on it, so that helped Broussard get a, a handle on it, but a sure first out. Washington fouls it off. And I, we were talking about it's a big game. There's going to be pressure on both sides. UCLA, the number two seed, defending national champion, feeling some heat on their home field. But I think if you're UCLA, Kenzie, until Fresno State proves that they can score on Rachel Garcia, I guess it does that take a little bit of this heat away from the home team? I should say the, the host team, UCLA. It should. <laughs> I mean, it, it should. And it should be something that they're very used to. I mean, they're used to looking out into the circle and seeing Megan Framo and Rachel Garcia, even Holly Azevedo, we might see her this weekend. I mean, UCLA has the best pitching staff in the nation. And so as an offense, you're going, we got to push one. We just got to get one run across. And it's not like their offense is scuffling here. They've had some chances, just had, a, had the big hit with a runner in scoring position to push a run across. They stranded five on base in the first two innings, but the base is loaded in the first. And you got to credit Dulcini for a lot of that, too, as well. Yes. Yes. I mean, Dulcini, she's one of the best pitchers in the country. She's gotten kind of hidden over in Fresno State. Don't hear a lot about her, don't see her visibility wise in the Mountain West, but she's got some serious talent. Washington finds some green grass in left center, and there's a base hit with one out. Here in the top of the fourth. Well, back at the beach and better than ever next spring, the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational returns. You can log on to the website for more information. We'd love to see you February 2022 in the Bay Area for the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitation. And the caliber of teams that you're going to see there is spectacular. They're still formulating the teams, but trust us. They're going to yeah. be great. <laughs> like a mini women's college world series. It is. That's a great February. way to put it. 
Kelly yeah. Gooden has a bunt base hit. She slaps it into left field. Back to back. One out hits for the Bruins. Two on, one out, and that turns the lineup over to Jordan. I mean, the bottom of this lineup for UCLA, four hits already in this game. They've been the table, a little bit of everything, slap, short game. They've had the runners on. UCLA just has been missing that big hit from the middle of the lineup. And to your point, Malaulu, Washington, and Gooden, the 7 8 9 hitters. Malaulu's one for two. Same with Washington, and Gooden's two for two. The bottom of the order producing now. Jordan in the top of the order trying to pick it up here for the Bruins. Borderline strike. Lily Dolcini, six foot senior in Ferndale, Georgia. To the right side, gathered nicely. Miranda Roller gets the out at first. The other runners advance. Washington winding up at third. Gooden down to second. If you're going to make an out, make your out productive. That's exactly what Jordan does, even though it's a nice rollover that Dolcini likes, especially pitching against a dangerous hitter in Aliyah Jordan. But it moves her teammates. You get a feeling, Kenzie, this is a huge spot in this game. Scoreless, top of the fourth. Runners at second and third for the Bruins with two outs. Rihanna Perez at the plate. First pitch hacking, out of play, back a few rows. And I think Bree Perez knows that she's going to get a pitch right here. I mean, Haley Dulcini has walked Rachel Garcia twice. She's on deck, not really wanting to mess too much with her. And so Perez knows that. Two outs. This pitcher's coming right at me. I better be ready. Shortens up and takes a strike on that outside corner. And now it's 0-2. to that same spot, fouled away by Brianna Perez. Brianna had a huge hit last night, a three-run home run. Help beat Long Beach State. And with this key spot in the game, the Bulldogs want to talk this over. As Coach Cox comes out, talk to Dulcini and the catcher, Lawley. And I'm sure, Kinsey, this has to be about what they what they want to do pitch selection-wise here up 0-2 in the count. Well, Dolcini was able to strike out Perez in that second inning, and it was on an outside pitch. So here, 0-2, you could see Perez was just kind of fouling off that outside pitch. And so wanting to make sure, hey, what are we throwing? Is it going to be off the plate? We want to make sure we don't bring it over the plate. She's in swing mode. Down the left field side, right near the line, caught by the shortstop, Lily Denby. UCLA now 0 for 7 today with runners in scoring position. When we come back, we'll visit the Bruins head coach, Kelly Inouye Perez. Welcome back to the NCAA Regionals, brought to you by Capital One. Winner's bracket game from L.A., scoreless UCLA and Fresno State in the fourth. Let's visit with the Bruins head coach, Kelly Inouye Perez. Coach, your offense, five hits, have stranded eight runners on base, unable to break through so far against Haley Dolcini. What's the answer to that? 
Well, you know, that's why we play seven innings. I think, you know, the best part is, uh, you know, we're making adjustments. It was great for us to get some, to manufacture some base runners there and put us in a good situation. Got to be patient. You know, you got to be patient with it. If, it. if it was that easy, right, we'd be manufacturing runs, everybody, every inning. But it's going to be the opportunity to make adjustments. And the team that can do that is obviously going to come out on top. Well, Coach, for Rachel in the circle, back-to-back -back quick innings. But that first inning had a little bit of adversity and then a timeout, and then she levels up. What do you see from her when she just goes to that next level? Um, you know, I think the best part about what she's been able to do is sometimes she creates her own mess, right? But, you know, hitting the first batter um, <laughs> in both innings is not your ideal start. But her ability to to get tougher um, as, as those situations are created are, are critical, especially at this time of the year. So uh, not the plan, but her ability to settle in, I think, is what makes Rachel Rachel. Yep. Always appreciate the time. Thanks so much, Coach. All right. Thank you. Kelly Inouye Perez, Season 15, the head coach at her alma mater. Score this game, Matson, the Mountain West Conference Player of the Year, two freshmen leading off in this scoreless game in the home half of the fourth. Held out on strikes in the first. Three, four, and five batters for the Bulldogs. The scoreless game in the winner's bracket. By the way, Oklahoma has come back to take a 3-2 lead on Wichita State in the fifth inning in Norman. But they're getting a battle from the champions of the American Conference, the champions of the Mount West, Fresno State, trying to do the same with the number two overall seed, UCLA. I'll tell you, the parity in these regionals is real. Some of these two and three seeds, mm, tough. Now this regional here, since we know so much about it, it's been fun to, to get to know the teams and the players in detail in the last several days. We've got a couple more days to go as there's a strikeout of Matson. You have three conference champions here. You have UCLA, of course, who won the Pac-12. Fresno State who won the Mount West. Long Beach who won the Big West. And strike three on Matson. Minnesota finished second in the Big Ten regular season behind Michigan, so they're the only at-large team here. And then we mentioned that all four teams really have an ace, Kenzie. Yes. And, and Minnesota kind of, you know, the odd team out just because three of the four teams are from the state of California. They play each other every single year. Minnesota comes in. I mean, they played UCLA in the Women's College World Series in 2019, but they don't get to play especially this year, don't get to play any non-conference games. And so a little bit of the odd team out, but you bet every team has some serious pitching. I mean, all Americans in the circle and some seniors in the circle for every team. Well, the Bruins, quite frankly, they're the gold standard when it comes to the postseason with appearances and national titles. Golden Gophers went to Oklahoma City for the first time in school history a couple of years ago. Fresno State's won a national title in 98. Long Beach State went to five Women's College World Series back in the late 80s, early 90s, the last being in 93. 0-2 to Vanessa Hernandez is a hair low. Catches the low part of the zone. That's three consecutive strikeouts for Garcia. Do not miss a minute of the action from the NCAA softball regionals. And we'll take you to the best live action on seven innings live. It's on the ESPN app. Every game, every big moment on the road to the Women's College World Series only on the ESPN networks through Sunday. Again, you can find that on the ESPN app. you got to be firing off the highlights today. Well, I bet they've been in Norman recently. They've come here to Los Angeles. We've got the top two seeds nationally getting a yep. challenge on this winner's bracket Saturday. Yeah, both both games pretty low scoring. 2-2 two -two for Oklahoma and Wichita State, and obviously scoreless here. Good 
Big rip by Noriega. Adriana was a strikeout victim in the first. Only one hit so far for Fresno State. That was from Roller, the second batter of the game in the bottom of the first single to left off Rachel Garcia. Wow, well, that is just a nasty 0-2 pitch that was very close to being strike three. I don't know what a hitter could have done with that pitch, even had they tried to offer at it. I don't know where it missed, to be quite honest. <laughs> I thought it was strike three. Instead, this is the tag to complete the strikeout as Rachel Garcia fans the side. She's now K-7. We finished four. UCLA and Fresno State are scoreless. The NCAA Softball Regional is presented by Capital One. Los Angeles Regional. Winner's bracket game, first of three games today from L.A. After this one, we have the elimination game between Long Beach State and Minnesota on the ESPN app. And the third elimination game after that, which will feature the winner of game two against the loser of this game here. And right now, we've got a scoreless contest between number two overall national seed UCLA and Fresno State. The Bruins, the visiting team on their home field in this game. So here in the top of the fifth, UCLA comes to bat. Guess who's leading off? Double zero. That's Rachel Garcia. Chance for a play, but unable to get to it, Noriega. If she comes up with that catch, Dolcini's walking out to right field and giving her a hug. <laughs> Would have taken something special for sure to Come up with that one, that long run from right field for Noriega. Yeah! Seen a couple of balls down there in the corner in right field. Well, there was Just one yesterday it. that Minnesota had come in and out of the glove, and then a couple of pitches later is when Fresno State got that big base hit to snap the scoreless tie. Tia has walked twice. She's behind in the count here, a ball and two strikes. To left in foul ground in the corner, but up out of play and into the trees. Well, cini has got to be real careful here. I mean, yes, Garcia's walked twice, so right now two strikes. She's looking to swing. see the power she had in that foul ball. From one, two to two balls, two strikes on Rachel Garcia leading off the UCLA fifth inning. She has hit a dozen homers this year. One of those came off of Haley Dolcini in the season opening matchup between these schools this year. Yeah, it was her, her first plate appearance back after sitting out of 2020 with Team USA and home run kind of went viral. Like, hey, look who's back in college softball. Well, she's come all the way back in this count. Garcia has from being down 0-2 to a full count. She's already walked twice today. Down the third base side in foul ground, and the shortstop Denby has been busy in that part of the field today. Catches another one to get Garcia for a big first out for Dolcini at Fresno State. Yeah, Dolcini is going to get a lot of fly balls and pop-ups down the left side. So Matson, we've seen her busy out in left field, and Denby, the shortstop, running that one down just because Dolcini's working that rise ball inside to the righties, away to the lefties. You can see five flyouts, a couple of ground outs.
last at bat, you may recall. Bocini was really busting Delaney Wiz in. She starts her away with that pitch there. Starts to go back in there and levels the count of the ball and a strike. Yeah, Garcia and Wiz, the only two right-handed hitters for UCLA. So you could see Dulcini, she was really working that the outside part of the plate, trying to set up that inside. We haven't seen her go inside very much to the left-handed hitters. So she's got that space to work on the outside part of the plate. All in two strikes. Who's taking a little walk and a deep breath. to left and foul ground again, but it lands foul. I wonder if Madsen just wants to stay on the line out in left field. <laughs> How many balls have we seen right there in that foul territory deep in, deep in the part of Easton Stadium? And she's playing kind of straight up in left field, but I'm wondering, hey, shift over. That's where all the balls are going. There have definitely been probably about a half dozen that either Mats in the left fielder or the shortstop Denby have caught there, and that's pulled foul. Maybe six pitches from Dolcini in this game. She threw 133 pitches against Minnesota last night. Punch to the right side, that's foul, scooped up. Hernandez was trying to just kind of casually bring that from a few inches foul to fair. Oh yeah, no, you want that ball. fair. <laughs> <laughs> Your Fresno State, are you sure? That was, that was fair. This is reached on an error and flight to left, 0 for 2. After a two homer game last night. Off the plate. That curveball that Dulcini is able to throw to Garcia and Wiz, the two right-handed hitters. She does not like to throw it as much to the left-handed hitters. High fly, left field, at the fence, caught by Matson. Wiz making a bid to untie this game, but it came up just short with the freshman's back against the wall in left field. We were just talking about the ball finding her out in left field. You could see Coach Kirk Walker at third thought this had a chance all the way back to the warning track. Freshman out in left field. Big catch, but big out for Dulcini in the circle. Brady. Roller makes the play on a hot shot. And the Bruins go in order. It's still scoreless at the midpoint of the fifth. This winner's bracket game scoreless in the bottom of the fifth. You see Lisa Fernandez, the pitching coach for UCLA. And this is Rachel Garcia after coming off the field. She had just struck out the side. And you've noticed this, Kenzie, a few times this year, not only in this game where It'll, Rachel Garcia will have an inning where you think, oh, it's perfect. She's going to go and take a seat in the dugout. And she has a conversation with her coach. Well, you can see her right there. She's talking to Coach Fernandez about what she's seeing out in the circle, talking about swings, even though she had just struck it out the side. So she's going to go back and, hey, this is what I saw on this pitch. I liked this option. And such a veteran. There's been moments in this season where UCLA has let her call her own game out in the circle. She has a huge part and a huge say of her game and what she's throwing. And this is an old school pitcher's duel right here. If anyone's gonna know about an old school pitcher's duel, it's gonna be Coach Fernandez. I'm just showing the importance of this game, even after striking out the side. Hey, let's talk about it a little bit. What'd you see? Good stuff. 
three-time Olympic gold medalist, won a couple of Women's College World Series as a player with UCLA in 90 and 92. Certainly one of the legends of the game, a softball Hall of Famer. Lisa Fernandez, who, oh yeah, by the way, swing the bat pretty darn well in addition to her pitching. Yeah, so in that in that shot as well, Rachel was putting on her helmet. She's getting ready to swing and go up to the plate, but it's going to have a, a stop first to talk about her pitching in the inning and talk to her pitching coach before she goes up to the plate. You saw that she hasn't allowed more than one earned run in a game since the second game of the championship series against OU in 2019. Still won that game. She gave up four earned runs and then won a national championship, so I think she got over the fact that night that she gave it more than one run. But it just goes to show you the consistency of Rachel Garcia. Yeah, I mean, she's got a lot going on. <laughs> got to talk about that scouting report. Got to go out and pitch. Swing a bat. Haley Galvin, the DP, leading off for Fresno State in the fifth. A 2-2 pitch. Hitter. That's very similar to her first plate appearance when she was also hit by Garcia. The third batter hit by Rachel Garcia today. But speaking of pitchers who actually hit, take a look at these that are in the NCAA tournament. And quite a few of them have already uh, made their presence not only felt in the circle, but with the bat. Yeah, this is just some of the hitting pitchers that we have in the NCAA tournament. We also have Sierra Lang for George Washington. We saw a senior pitcher for Notre Dame Morgan Ryan go yard earlier today. Valerie Cagle, she's gone yard. Shelby Sinceri. I mean, there's some serious studs in this tournament who hit and get it done with their arm in the circle. There's no state running at first. Juliana Martinez. Fresno native out of Clovis West High School. Skyler Broussard had a huge hit yesterday for Fresno State. And their 3-0 win over Minnesota. She knocked in the first two runs of the game. Only one at bat so far today, reaching on a fielder's choice. If you're Fresno State right here, I'm really shocked we're not seeing a sacrifice bunt of some sort. I know Broussard, like you were saying, had a good swing in her last at bat and had a couple of hits yesterday, but we're talking about getting a run across against the best pitcher in the nation. You've got to try to get a short game down. Chancing of, of you getting a big hit, especially a pinch runner with some speed at first base. I mean, now two strikes, you've got to shorten up and put something in play. Right in on the fist, rolled out to second. Well, that'll work as well as a bunt. Washington throws out Broussard. They're able to advance. The pinch runner Martinez down to second with one out. You bet, as good as a bunt. It's a great job with two strikes. Ball was a little bit inside, but gets jammed up enough that the ball hit gets hit behind the pinch runner Martinez. Kelly I wonder if this, yeah, I wonder if this conversation is about the pinch runner Martinez if she was in contact with Kinsley Washington running the bases there. Plain umpire Katrina Kershaw now talking with Scott Tomlinson, who's the first base umpire. Now they're going to bring in the other two. Umpires, Vince Price and Ed Cooper. Now they're going to say there's nothing there. Let's take another look. You can see Martinez, the pinch runner. Oh, I think they were asking if she hit the ball, if her ah, foot touched that, it. Yep. Yep, that's exactly it. 
the way the ball took that last yes. bounce, it almost gave the optical illusion that it did hit her in the foot. I don't think it did. Yeah, I think it just hit almost a clump of dirt right in front of her foot. I, I didn't see it hit her foot, but you, you nailed it. It did hop up a little bit differently. Let's take another look from that angle. Yeah, that's nothing there. That's right, yeah, Paul. Looks like the umpire's got it right. And Martinez was doing what she should have done, kind of shadowing the ball. Yes. If anything, just to kind of distract Washington from feeling it cleanly, she did, but base runner's got every right to do that. Oh. Oh, that's a strike. And that inside edge to Lolly. Tough pitch there from Rachel Garcia. chase it here comes the runner martinez for the plate she scores lolly with a double her first extra base hit of the season and fresno state leads one nothing i mean this is postseason you gotta have extra effort from players who maybe don't have those key hits all season long. This is a true freshman, Avery Lolly, down in the eight hole. She didn't even start this season. She's in for an injured player, Kelsey Carrasco, their starter every day. She's been called upon to do the catching, the heavy lifting behind the plate. But it's just a bonus that you get that out of your freshman in the eight hole. She squared that up. Well, off the bat, it definitely looked like it had a chance to get out. Almost did. And Lolly is going to be pinch run for you. It's a hero's welcome in the dugout. Her ninth hit of the season, again, as Kinsey was mentioning, didn't play much early in the year because Kelsey Carrasco was the starting catcher, and she tore her ACL in early April, and that finished her season. Forcing a more prominent role for Lolly. And no bigger hit than that for her in her fledgling collegiate career off Rachel Garcia. Mejia pinch running. Really didn't be the batter. And that's a strike. Well, Kenzie, you and I have been talking throughout this game as it continued to stay scoreless inning after inning about the pressure really on both teams, but that the pressure, as far as UCLA was concerned, was until Fresno State scored a run, I don't think they felt a huge amount of pressure. Well, that just changed with one swing. Well, I think after Haley Dulcini got out of the first inning, got out of that bases loaded jam, where UCLA is so potent, they are so good in the first inning. That's where they do their damage, they set the tone, and then they can play loose. They didn't score in that first inning. And then inning by inning, you can kind of feel the pressure start to mount for UCLA. I mean, this is a game that they should win. Fresno State, the underdog, of course. You never know who's going to win. You don't play on paper, of course. That's why you got to do it. But you could feel the pressure just tightening a little bit right now for UCLA. This is a situation they have not found themselves in very much all season long. They've only lost four times all year. They've only lost one time at home this season, and that was to have you playing in Washington back on April 24th. Top of the order, Caitlin Jennings, ground ball to second base. Washington throws her out, but the big blow comes from a freshman, Avery Lawley, an RBI double, and it's Fresno State with a one nothing lead. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. Winner's bracket game from Los Angeles. 
Fresno State has just taken a 1-0 lead over UCLA. And this just completed bottom of the fifth inning. Avery Lawley, true freshman, hits one deep to left, out of reach of Kelly Gooden off the fence, bringing in the game's first run, first extra base hit of the year for Avery Lawley. And it's Fresno State with the lead. It's the top of the six. UCLA is the visiting team on their home field here. And with the six, seven, and eight part of the order, UCLA is going to go to the bench, bring out Anna Vines, a pinch hitter, and she strokes a line drive. Manson got a glove on it, but it's down for a base hit. So Vines wastes no time and strokes a single to left, starting the UCLA sixth inning. So clutch coming off the bench. Anna Vines, typically we'll see her start at second base. So being called upon, swinging first pitch. If Madsen comes up with this catch, that's huge. It was in her glove, not able to secure it. And I tell you what, Mark, the bottom of the lineup for UCLA is has been really solid today. On both sides, the bottom of the lineup for Fresno State as well has been solid, but this is kind of who you want up right now for UCLA. This is where they've done their damage. Their big hitters have not been able to square up Haley Dulcini. It's been their small ballers, Malaulu, Washington, and Gooden. That's six hits now for UCLA. All been singles. Hunt laid down. Roussard gets the out. Malaulu advances Vines down to second with a successful sack punt. I mean, the good news for Dulcini is you have a runner in scoring position and you have two short gamers, if you will, so most likely the, the ball's gonna stay in the ballpark, but they have three hits against you. By the way, that's just the sixth sacrifice bunt of the year for UCLA. First of the season for Tessa Malaulu. Brianna Perez has three sack bunts. So that means she's the only one with multiple sack bunts. You know what that tells UCLA. me? Is they haven't they haven't had this situation very often. They haven't. They have not. They're a team. Yep. Yeah, they, they're a team who who can short game when they need to. They have that personnel, but that stat tells me they have had. They have not had close games like this where they've needed that sack bunt. And Mala Ulu just got it down on the first pitch like it was no big deal. Oh. Even though she'd never had one in her collegiate career. Mosini, who has not had a strikeout since the second inning, would love one here. Washington is one for two at the plate. Puts it in play and a pop up out to short and on the outfield grass. Dinby makes the catch. That'll work basically just as well as a strikeout for Dulcini as Vines has to stay at second with two outs. Yeah, UCLA today 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. Hines representing the tying run, the ninth spot of the order up. Kelly Gooden is two for two. A bunt hit. He's also had a slap hit. In fact, she's had a lot of hits, period, this year, hitting well over 350 on the season. Last night against Long Beach State went one for two, scored a run, so she is a combined three for four so far in the region. And in a huge spot here, if UCLA down a run in the six, down the left field side, have been a lot of balls put in play there, and in foul ground, Denby makes the catch to retire the side. UCLA strands the potential tying run, finds at second base. Well, don't look now, but the stage is being set for a very dramatic top of the seventh 
But before we get there, we have a bottom of the six for Fresno State leading the game 1-0. They have scored against Rachel Garcia. UCLA has only lost once at home this year. That was game one of a Saturday, April 24th doubleheader against Gabby Plain in Washington, which the Huskies won 7-4. Well, this is not an elimination game, obviously. It's the winner's bracket game. So it's not like this season is on the line for UCLA when we do get to the seventh. But I tell you what, did we expect this type of drama, Kinsey? I don't, I don't know about drama, but hey, I will take credit. I said we could see a pitcher's duel. I don't know if we expected the score to be what it is. But I tell you what, Haley Dulcini, there's been a lot of talk about her all season long and what she's been able to do for Fresno State, and she's lived up to the billing. Well, she's going to have the half inning of her career ahead in the seventh because she, she knows she's going to lead it by at least a run. We'll see what happens here. With the heart of the order up for Fresno State, two, three, and four. Miranda Rolliter leading off as one of the two hits today for Fresno State, a first inning single to left. UCLA has stranded nine base runners today. Fresno State has left three. UCLA has had the betters of the better of the scoring chances until Fresno State just took advantage of one in the last inning. Goes full, three and two on Rolliter. I will say before this game, you and I were talking about Fresno State and we were kind of watching them pregame. They were very loose. I'm not sure what they were doing, but they were having dance battles. They were having some cheers way before the game. I've got the catcher, Alyssa Garcia, again, who took one off her left side earlier, and that one was firmly off the face mask. Rachel Garcia throws 70 miles an hour, so you're going to take a foul tip. And it, it accelerates into the catcher after that foul tip and right off the front of the face mask. Lisa Fernandez out to check on her battery. It is a loose dugout right now for Fresno State, the Bulldogs. But. The most three, the most difficult three outs to get, Kinsey, as you know, being a pitcher, <laughs> the final three. Yes. <laughs> strike three on the three-two pitch hits the outside corner, and the strikeout is the eighth for Garcia. Well, the weekly softball podcast chronicling the road to the Women's College World Series and beyond is, of course, seven innings podcast with our great. ESPN softball personalities covering the sport, shining a spotlight on what makes this great sport so special. Seven Innings Podcast, get it where you pick up your podcast. New one drops every Thursday. Now he Madsen takes ball one. She has fanned twice today against Garcia. Now looking ahead to the top of the seventh for UCLA the top of the order up. Yep. Jordan, Perez, Rachel Garcia, Wiz do up fourth. That's the top of the order. UCLA is going to be trailing it by at least a run here. Down one nothing. 
winner's bracket game. The winner moves right into the regional final tomorrow. Loser has to find a much longer road, including playing later today. Yeah, I look at those top four hitters for UCLA. Only one hit. The majority of the hits for UCLA have come at the bottom of the order. They're slap, slappers and short gamers. The UCLA optimist will say to Kinsey, well, they're just due. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes. This is going to be due up fourth in the inning. Whereas Perez will be due up second. Strike three on the inside corner. As the strikeouts continue to pile up for Garcia, who now has nine and gets Matson for a third time. I mean, Garcia has had the middle of the lineup locked up against Fresno State. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. This one looking on that curveball into the lefty, 70 miles an hour right at your hands. Dolcini getting ready to take the bound in the circle for that's going to be a dramatic top of the seventh. UCLA has won the last five head-to-head -head meetings with Fresno State in 19 of the last 20. Fresno State hasn't beaten UCLA since February of 2012, and that was at a neutral site. Rachel Garcia knows that she's going to get a chance to swing the bat before this game is over. He's looking to strike out the side here for a third time today. Garcia only two hits on the day. UCLA has six, but Fresno State had that timely hit. It's been the difference. Bouncer out to third. Lala Ulu throws her out. Do not go anywhere. Haley Dulcini back to the circle. Fresno State takes a 1-0 lead to the seven. Let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. He comes to the bottom of the fifth for Avery Lawley. Freshman catcher for Fresno State hits one off the wall and scoring pinch runner Juliana Martinez with what is at this point the game's only run. And Fresno State leading UCLA 1-0. Here come the Bruins in the top of the seventh facing the Bulldog ace Haley Dulcini trying to close it out. Yeah, they're ace in the circle. I mean, remember yesterday, she threw 133 pitches against Minnesota. She's up to 109 going into this inning. So well over 200 pitches in two games. High drive, deep, off the top of the fence and center. It was about a foot or two from tying the game. Instead, a long single for Aaliyah Jordan on the first pitch of the top of the seven. Well, just to finish my thought, Dolcini doesn't have a strikeout. Her last one is in the second inning. And to me, her speeds are down a little bit. She came into this game throwing 64, 65. The last two innings, her speeds have dropped to 60, 61, even 59 a couple of times. But she's been using her spin to get UCLA to pop up, even without those strikeouts. But UCLA has been making contact the last couple of innings. Do they finally capitalize with a runner on here in the seventh? Uh, Jordan jumped all over that first pitch and 
missed hitting it out in time the game by just a matter of a foot or so, if that. The dead say, center. Inches. Inches for being a tie ball game. Very smart, not overrunning, taking a long single. That would have been just a momentum killer for Aaliyah Jordan to run into an out at second base. And you nailed it, Mark. The toughest three outs are going to be right here in this inning. Brianna Perez. Lauren Carter, by the way, running for Jordan. Bent laid down. Bare hand, throw to first in time. Lolly, the freshman catcher, making the defensive play, but Perez puts down her team leading fourth sack bunt of the season. And it advances Carter. Representing the tying run down to second. Lady, you got her. And that's what they have done in the season. Two, three, four, five hitters. And we're going to see at least Garcia coming up here. I mean, this is who you want up. Even though they don't have a hit on the day against Dolcini, Garcia, Wiz, and Brady. This is who UCLA wants up as part of the order. And Dolcini, she's been throwing a ton of pitches. If, if she can get out of this game, it's going to be very difficult road for UCLA. Dolcini's their ace. I do have other pitchers on staff, but I mean, it's kind of a drop off. She's just an absolute stud in the circle. Whereas on the flip side, UCLA has a couple of aces. They got a couple of arms that can go the distance and get it done. It makes this inning, makes this game that much more important. Garcia has walked twice and fouled out officially 0 for 1. Representing the go ahead run at the plate for the Bruins. Borderline pitch just misses. Fresno State leading 1-0, two defensive outs away. Pulling off a big upset here in the winner's bracket game, but the Bruins are defending national champions for a reason. Cini pours in a strike and gets ahead of Garcia. They have not had that key hit. 0 for 9 runners in scoring position. Garcia hit a solo home run in yesterday's game for UCLA. The 12th of the season. Tying run and Lauren Carter at second. 2 2 pitch. Swing, fouled back. That's going to get up on the screen. Woo, take a big deep breath, everybody, including Rachel Garcia. The pressure's on in the top of the seventh in Westwood. Oh my goodness, a very close pitch goes the Bruins way and instead of a strikeout in the second out, it is a full count. Well, of course, it's going to come down to a full count, right? Rachel Garcia up to the plate. That's a good call. It's up a little off the plate. 3-2 fouled away. You can tell Garcia is really frustrated with that inside pitch. She just doesn't look quite comfortable to me today with that, that screwball from Dolcini. Dolcini's trying to show her something outside, get her to chase, but then she comes in hard with that heat. Garcia's just kind of fouling it off, just trying to get rid of it. Shot to right. That ball's hit deep over the head of the right fielder, Noriega. Here comes the tying run. Carter touches the plate. Garcia ties it with a long single, and it's 1-1.
I mean, this is why she's the best in the game. This is a pitch, that's a ball. That's ball four. But she doesn't want to walk. She's already been walked twice in this game. She wants this game in her hands. That's how good she is. Now Wiz hits a deep drive to left. Caught by the center fielder Jennings. Right up against the fence for a very loud second out. Delaney Wiz, she's just been under everything she's seen from Dulcini. She's made contact, but she's popped up to left twice. That went deep to center a couple of feet from ending this ball game, but I mean, I tell you, the spin from Dulcini is real. I know her speeds are down, her pitches are up, but she's still relying on that up stuff. It's got enough jump to stay in this game. Maya yeah! Brady falls behind 0-2. Well, keep in mind, this is the top of the seventh. Fresno State I have the five, six, and seven part of their order up when we go to the bottom half. Will it be tied or will UCLA have their first lead? That's a high drive to deep center, but will stay in the park. It is caught by Jennings. But UCLA ties it. Rachel Garcia's RBI double will 1 1 to the last of the seven. The NCAA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? 1-1, last of the seven. Fresno State, the home team in this game, which is on UCLA's home field. You see Long Beach State also saw Minnesota, two teams waiting to play an elimination game about a half hour after we're finished here. Now Rachel Garcia tied it with an RBI single. And now she'll try to send it to extra innings, has not lost since May 9th of 2019. That was against Arizona and has won her last 23 decisions. Yeah, and this is just a complete showcase of what kind of player she is, what she's able to do, how much impact she has in a game. I know she's up for player of the year, but just watch this game. The tying hit at the plate, getting it done in the circle. Five, six, and seven batters for Fresno State in the seventh. Great to have you with us. Along with two-time All-American pitcher, Kinsey Fowler. I'm Mark Neely. What a game we've had. Our first of three games today from the Los Angeles Regional. The winner's bracket game. Winner moves to the regional final tomorrow. The loser will have a much tougher road to home, including playing the third and final game today, later tonight, in an elimination game. Oriega tries to bunt and he's in the hole over two. Fresno State's only mustered two hits off of Garcia. A first inning single for Miranda Rolliter. And then that huge RBI double by Avery Lawley in the fifth. Gave Fresno State a one nothing lead. Rachel Garcia, one out in the seventh. And all ten strikeouts from Garcia have been to the two, three, four, and five hitters. So that tells me that she's just clutching up. Look at her breakdown there. Ten strikeouts, couple of pop-ups, couple of ground outs, but she's gotten tougher against the middle part of the lineup in Fresno State. First pitch strike. Juliana Martinez, the pinch ran for Haley Galvin 
in the fifth has stayed in as the DP. She scored the Fresno State run in the fifth. One miles an hour, mm. and up in up in the zone. Martinez only has 15 at bats this season. Make it 11 strikeouts. And we're not away from extra innings. She's got a look in her eye right now that I don't know. I don't see very often from her covering her entire career. And it started when she was up to bat in that last half inning. You could just tell she had a little something extra in her eye. And we touched on this earlier. UCLA has not had a lot of these close contests all season. They've been that good. Skyler Broussard, 0 for 2. Well, UCLA came into the top of the seventh today, 1 and 4 this year when trailing, entering the seventh. Their only win had been against Cal State Fullerton. They trailed 4 3, entering the seventh, came back 1 10 4. But they tied it thanks to Garcia's RBI hit. Great shot, Megan Fremo, just kind of looking over the shoulder, seeing what pitches are being called. And a strike away from extra innings. Pitch coming, number 101 for Rachel Garcia. Right back to Garcia who makes the catch. And we're going to extra innings, just the second time this year for the Bruins to go extra frames. Seven innings will not be enough in our first game of the day. Well, both these teams had shutout wins yesterday, day one of the LA Regional. They match up in the winner's bracket today, and we're going to go to extra innings. Winner of this game goes right to the regional final tomorrow at 6 Eastern. The loser would have to play in that elimination game scheduled at 9.30 Eastern time tonight. We have Long Beach State, Minnesota in our first elimination game coming up whenever we finish this first game, which has had a lot of drama with Fresno State scoring in the fifth, UCLA tying it in the seventh. Both teams playing in extra innings for just the second time this season. UCLA, March 19th against Arizona State, went extra innings, won one nothing at eight. And Fresno State, they played extra innings at Utah State and won one to nothing in nine innings. So both teams one and zero in extra innings this year. So take a good look at Easton Stadium in Westwood. Top of the eighth. Bottom of the order coming up for the Bruins. They've been very, very good today. Garcia leads off. 0 for 2 today. Should be followed by Malaulu. Kinsley Washington do up third. How much more can Fresno State get out of pitcher Haley Dolcini, Kinsley? You know, I just keep wondering about it. I mean, she's she's their ace. I mean, she's the reason they're here. Pitcher of the year in her conference. I think she has all-American caliber stuff. But her strikeouts were up 
and then they kind of fell off. And you could you could see her speeds dropping inning by inning. And, and not to say it's anything that she's doing, it's just look at how many pitches she's thrown. And coming off yesterday where she threw 133 pitches. And that's the separation in these regionals. This game is so important if you don't have the staff like UCLA with a Megan Furimo or Rachel Garcia. And a five pitch walk to Alyssa Garcia to start the eighth. It's going to bring out head coach Jody Cox. And we have talked a couple of times during this regional about pitching staff for Fresno State. Olsini, by the way, did go all nine innings in that extra inning win over Utah State, but she didn't throw 133 pitches the day before that, and she went nine innings. So comparing apples to oranges there. And we talked to Coach Cox this week, and she said, we're going to go until she can't go. And that statement just tells us that she's going out there until she shows she has absolutely nothing left. Malaulu lays down a bunt. It's going to be a tough play, but it's made barehand by Broussard. Second sack bunt in back-to-back -back plate appearances for Malaulu, and it advances Garcia, representing the go-ahead run down to second. Yeah, this is the little stuff that matters right here. Perfect textbook. I love that she squares up to sack, doesn't show a drag. That just shows the importance of Malaulu getting that bunt down here in extra innings. Yamala Ulu, who had never laid down a sack bunt in her collegiate career. Now, granted, she's a true freshman. And she's done it twice her last two yeah. times up. First <laughs> two times in her career. Pitcher's duel, bring it out. Give me all the bunts. Kinsey Washington, and a base hit in the fourth. High drive towards center field, hit off the fence. Garcia will be stopped at third. Throw back into third base. That's a two base hit for Kinsey Washington. If you're wondering why the Bruins didn't run for Garcia. They already pinch hit for her, and she was brought back in. So if you do that, you lose her. So that's why they didn't run for her here. But Washington hit this ball well off the fence. Yeah, and Garcia is second base. You can see she was kind of inching, inching, inching. Doesn't go back to tag. I think this is a good call by Coach Walker at third holding her. I think if she goes, she's going to be hosed at home. Demby has a cannon of an arm over at short. And Garcia, not a ton of speed, a catcher, like you said, has already been pinch ran for, and she's in the game. Taylor Edwards pinch hitting here for the Bruins with a chance to claim their first lead. Runners at second and third, one out. Garcia at second. She sees the ball. Sometimes you can go back and, and tag knowing that you have the speed to get there, but she's going off the base a little bit, just knowing her speed, diving back into third. But, but this to me, Mark, right now, this pinch hit is very interesting. Kelly Gooden has two singles on the day. Taylor Edwards hitting in the nine hole for Gooden right here a swing away option with the runner at third, but Kelly Gooden has been seeing the ball very well. Edwards with 16 at bats on the year, now make it 17, catch made right along the line by Matson. We've seen that play a bunch of times today. And you gotta hold Garcia at third, so Fresno State gets the second out. As Edwards flies out to left. Yeah, 
It's going to bring up the top of the order. Great to have you with us. Gorgeous Saturday afternoon in Southern California. Our first of three games today in the LA Regional. Winner's bracket. UCLA tied the game at one in the seventh. We're now in extra innings. Leah Jordan was a big part of that seventh inning rally when she let it off. Barely missing a home run off the top of the fence in center field. up after that and it's out of play 0-2. And back-to-back and -back pitches. Aliyah Jordan swinging out of the zone. Those are two balls. I mean, you can't fault her wanting the moment in her last swing that she had. Hit it right on the screws. Smoked it to right center field. But now in a hole 0-2. Went up after that and whacks it into right. It comes through for the Bruins. It scores two. Garcia and Washington. And UCLA has taken a three to one lead. Yeah, you can see Jordan motion. Yeah, I know it was high, but hey, I can go get this with two strikes. I was just talking about how she was swinging out of the zone. When you have two strikes, you have to do this. And you can see the second baseman, Miranda Roder, she was kind of shifting to her right. That ball gets right by her on the left. How about two strike hitting with Aaliyah Jordan at the top of the lineup? It's being clutch. Diana Perez. Now, Fresno State has their bats in the bottom of the inning to try to come back. But how fortunes have changed here in a, a very short period of time, Kinsey, because you had Fresno State two defensive outs away from winning this game, moving to the winner's bracket, and playing tomorrow, and now facing the fact they have to come back in the bottom of this inning, or they're playing later today in an elimination game with their ace already throwing a ton of pitches. Off the glove of Matson, Rounding third, Jordan. She will score and that hill just got a little tougher to climb for the Bulldogs in the bottom of the inning. It's now four to one. You tell Dosini's kind of been running on fumes here, hadn't she? Yeah. Yeah, swinging on 3-0. Oh. And to your point, Mark, the longer that this game goes on and the last couple of innings with UCLA just hanging in there, the advantage, of course, is going to go to the Bruins because of how many pitches Haley Dulcini has thrown in the circle. I mean, Rachel Garcia, she's gone the distance as well, but she came into this game fresh. And that is going to be all for Dulcini. Boy, what an effort. So close to winning this game in seven. So with the Fresno State pitching change, we'll take a quick timeout. Well, what a Herculean effort by Haley Dolcini. Two outs away from beating UCLA in this game, taking it into extra innings. And now departs after seven and two thirds with UCLA now up four to one. Fresno State bringing in Dariana Orm, a sophomore. Makes her 19th appearance. Dariana Orm, she's been a really nice option for Fresno State this season, but she's going to be the complete opposite of Haley Dulcini. Works down in the zone with her drop. 
Rachel Garcia is the batter. Her line drive single off the fence and right. Scored the tying run in the seventh when the Bruins were down to their last two outs, trailing 1 0 in the seventh. And the offense has exploded for three runs so far here in the eighth. Looking for it. Perez able to advance the third. Looking ahead to the Fresno State bottom of the eighth. It's the eight, nine, and one part of the order with Wally scheduled to lead off. Dariana Orm, 5'7 sophomore. Pitched in three games at San Diego State to end the regular season through eight innings total. Did not allow a run and gave up only four hits, struck out eight. Full count. You can see the, the change in seen a few of those. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Orm is bringing it. 68. 69 miles an hour, a little around the zone. See the score bug up top. Wichita State gave the number one overall seed Oklahoma a bit of a scare. In fact, Shockers led for a chunk of that game, but Sooners came back to win it 7-5, and here UCLA was two outs away from having to fight their way back from the loser's bracket. But Lead it by three and feeling a lot more comfortable in their dugout. Now, I mean, looking way too far ahead, if you're going to make a run at the national championship like Oklahoma and UCLA are hoping to do, you want to be tested like this in regionals. That's in the center field. And add on again. Laney Wiz, her first hit of the day. Forty third RBI for Wiz. Ninth batter in this inning for UCLA is Maya Brady. Maya Brady, for her standards, has been relatively quiet in this regional. And she's one of the best hitters in this Bruin lineup. Yeah, she walked in her first plate appearance last night, but since then has seemed a bit uh, over-anxious, I guess is that the word, playing yeah. in her first NCAA postseason. Tops that one to first. The race to the bag is won by Hernandez. But nine batters come to the plate for the Bruins. UCLA scores four in the inning. Yeah, the Bruins, extra innings, clutching up. Aliyah Jordan getting it done. Well, our game tracker, Fresno State had a 1-0 lead thanks to a run in the fifth and an RBI double from Avery Lawley, but UCLA came back in the seventh, down to their last two outs, tied the game on a Rachel Garcia RBI base hit, and then UCLA just scored four times here in the top of the eighth, so the game in extra innings. Last chance now for Fresno State. They have the eight, nine, and one part of the order up against Garcia, who looks to finish it off. And can't say enough about Haley Dolcini, who's Unless her team rallies big here against one of the best pitchers in the game, is going to take a, a really difficult loss here after just a tremendous effort. Yeah, your heart just goes out to her. She had 13 shutout innings in this regional before that Rachel Garcia RBI single. It was just dominating. 
and almost just ran out of pitches. I mean, she threw 277 pitches from last night to today. It's a bunch. Yeah, she really seemed to be running on fumes late in this game. Wally leading off. She had the huge hit for Fresno State in the fifth. A double off the wall and left that scored Martinez, the pinch runner, at the game's first run. Softly hit, and that is going to scoot past Washington and into center. Fresno State does get the leadoff banner on with Lolly. Lolly with her second consecutive hit. Yeah, how about Avery Lolly? True freshman. This really didn't be the shortstop. First pitch strike. NB is grounded a third and popped a short. So again, a win by UCLA. They're in the winner's bracket and will be in the regional final in the three o'clock. Pacific time, 6 o'clock Eastern, start tomorrow. Needing just one more win to win the regional and host the Super Regional round. Fresno State would have to play in the third and final game, an elimination game later tonight. And Long Beach State and Minnesota coming up next. We'll have that game on the ESPN app. Right now, the Bulldogs trying to hang in. A dozen strikeouts for Rachel Garcia, and that's the first out of the eighth. Nice changeup from Garcia. It's a pitch that maybe not known for early in her career, but I've seen her use it quite a bit today. Caitlin Jennings in the top of the order for Fresno State. When we are finished here on ESPNU, we will send you to Big Ten Baseball, Indiana and Nebraska. Rachel Garcia has been Rachel Garcia today. Gave up that one run in the fifth, which really made for some drama in the seventh inning. I tell you what, Kenzie, it was exciting to watch. And then Garcia, who else gets the big hit that keeps him in the game and tied it up in the seventh? Oh, Fresno State had the momentum in that seventh inning. And they're looking to shut the door. And Rachel Garcia, that RBI single, that was ball four that <laughs> she hit. When you look at what she's done in the circle. But I said this earlier, this is a perfect showcase of why she's two-time National Player of the Year. Just a complete game changer at the plate and in the circle. The ball hits the back knee of Jennings. That is the fourth hit by pitch today. And Rachel Garcia, she's actually hit more batters than Fresno State has hits. Fresno State has three hits, two of those by Avery Lawley. And now four hit by pitches, and the second time that Jennings has been hit today is she was hit in the first inning as well. Yeah, it doesn't have a walk. Like you said, four hit by pitches. Kind of unique. And one of those hit by pitches was that run in the fifth inning where Fresno State took the lead. It was Haley Galvin that got hit and came around to score on the RBI double from Avery Lawley. 
And UCLA, when it mattered most, finally got hits with runners in scoring position. They started today 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position. They have finished four for their last six with runners in scoring position today. Miranda Rolliter, one for three, so she has one of the three Fresno State hits. That was a first inning single. That bounces over Wiz and down the right field line, and here comes Lawler to score. Lolly is in, and now a second one coming in. Jennings is in. Rolliter brings in two, and Fresno State says we're not going to go away quietly. It's 5-3. There was a lot that happened here. This was kind of a slow developing play to score two runs. Kind of a seeing eye single way over the head of Delaney Wiz. Seneca Kira out in right field, throws it in. And right here, got to sure up this ball. And I'm not sure what the hesitation is for with Delaney Wiz going after that ball. This is postseason. I think she might have forgotten that there was another runner. I think you're right. That has to be the case. I mean, she just quit running after it. A single error on Wiz that allowed the trailing runner to score. So here's Madsen representing the tying run at the plate. With her team leading 11 home runs. Rachel Garcia has allowed more than one earned run in a game now for the first time in a very long time. That ball into right, gathered by Washington, and the tying runs are on with one out. It's been since June 4th of 2019. She's allowed more than one earned run in an outing. Ramos gotten up now in the bullpen for UCLA. I mean, hot take, I would bring her in if she's warm. I mean, it's one thing if she's not warm, if she's just now getting going in the bullpen. Rachel Garcia was cruising, but that's three pretty sharply hit balls for Fresno State. And Macon Framo, one of the best pitchers in the country. And Rachel Garcia is going on eight innings here. So the tying runs on base, one out. Here's the cleanup batter, Vanessa Hernandez, who represents the winning run at the plate for Fresno State. She's hit seven home runs this year. Wow. Fresno State, just when you thought they're ready to shut the toolbox, say no. He will not go away quietly. Mountain well, West Conference remember, champions with some spunk. Yeah, I remember talking to Coach Cox earlier this week when you asked her, what's one thing we should know about your group? And she says, we don't go away. We're gritty. And they're showing that. Hey. Right on a borderline pitch near the low inside edge, and it puts Garcia... Heading that count, one and two. How big are those last two RBI hits for UCLA in the top of the inning from Perez and Wiz? Now. Well, also think about the two runners that they left on the table. Had two runners on. Could have pushed a couple more across and kept that rally going. But of course, the pitching change for Fresno State. UCLA has stranded a dozen runners on base. Fresno State's left three. They have two on base here. 
very close pitch near the bottom of the zone. Hernandez is fortunate she's still up there. Full count. Two on, one out, and a two run game in extra innings in this winner's bracket contest from LA. And right now you can see Garcia is keeping the ball very low in the zone. Typically known for having one of the best rise balls, she's not even messing around with that. She's going corner to corner, really working her curve to both sides, trying to make sure that if Fernandez hits it, it's on the ground. Another 3-2 pitch. Ball four. And the bases are loaded for Fresno State. Will we see Faremo here? I would be kind of shocked if we didn't. I mean, she's looking. She's warming up. Well, Rachel Garcia has allowed only three home runs this year. They have all been solo home runs. McKenna Harper of Arizona State hit one on March 19th. Haley Cruz of Oregon hit one in Eugene off of her on April 11th. And then A.J. Militello hit a pinch hit home run at Utah on May 2nd against Garcia. So only three home runs allowed this year, and they have all been with the bases empty. Yeah, if you're Fresno State, you're not even looking for a home run, though. You're just looking for something in the outfield. Kayahi Matson, she's the tying run at second base. She has a ton of speed. Pinch hitter comes up, Lexi Webb. Webb batting for Noriega. Webb, eight hits and 34 bats this year. Three homers, 10 RBIs. Takes a big hack at the first one and fouls it. UCLA tied it with one in the seventh. Sent it to extra innings. Scored four in the top of the eighth, and to many, it might have looked like the game was over. The Fresno State with one out has scored two and have the bases loaded with Webb pinch inning. It's a tap towards short. Throw goes to first in time. A run scores to make it a one-run game. Fresno State down to their final out. An RBI on the ground out for Webb. And it's 5-4 with runners at second and third. Two down. Roller schooling her on the play. Juliana Martinez, who came in as a pinch hitter, or a pinch runner in the fifth and has stayed in the game, a swing and a miss. She struck out on three pitches against Garcia and her only plate appearance against her in the seventh. Uh, it was hitting for Haley Galvin, who was their DP. He's in the game. A strike on the outside edge. And Fresno State's down to their final strike. Through an outfield pretty shallow. Knowing the importance of that run at second base. And Garcia hangs on, as does UCLA. Fresno State had the tying run at third and winning run at second, but the Bruins win at 5-4 in extra innings and move on to the regional final. What a game. I mean, a pitcher's duel going to the bottom of this game. Haley Dolcini, you got to tip your hat to her, that ace in the circle for Fresno State. But Rachel Garcia goes the distance, 13 strikeouts, and a big day offensively for her as well. That's going to take care of things for now from Westwood. Again, we have an elimination game, our second game of the day, first elimination game, Minnesota and Long Beach State coming up. You can find that 
on the ESPN app. What a game. UCLA survives it. They win it 5-4 and 8 over Fresno State. Coming up next, Big Ten Baseball, Indiana taking on Nebraska. For Kenzie Fowler and our entire crew, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks for sharing this one with us. The Bruins survive it in Westwood.